Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Yes, Game Maker Studio 2 is here. Beta is now available. You can go download it. And before you do, I'm quite excited to show you what it's all about. So there is a huge amount of changes. I can't even imagine uh, describing them all in this one video. That's why we'll probably be making more videos uh, later in order to show you all of the new features Game Maker Studio 2 offers and uh, just how excited I am about it. So as you can see, uh, this is what it looks like, the greeting screen, the home start page, a bunch of different uh, options to start a new project, including uh, well, a recent project that you can see I've been trying out of quite a few different things. Uh, and well, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Today I'm gonna show you the main changes to the way you're gonna be using Game Maker Studio 2. Not just like the differences in the coding that changed a bit, the differences with new resources, but mainly the differences with the UI, which isn't gonna to take too long, but it should uh, make for a really exciting video because of the uh, impressive changes they made. So let's first of all uh, get started with a new project. And as you can see, this is already a feature people have been asking since I don't know, the GM6 days, which is a Game Maker language only mode. So on the left here, you have a button for drag and drop and here, uh, the Game Maker language mode. Now, drag and drop has had a huge, huge overhaul and I will make a video showing you just what it's all about and how, uh, how much better it is. Uh, however, you know that I mainly use Game Maker language, uh, GML, that's how I do things. And so for this tutorial, I'm just gonna make, use Gamic language. And here it is. Uh, you can now choose where you wanna save your project. I'm just gonna quickly put it in here. Call it a tutorial two. As you can see, I had a previous recording, not too happy with it. I'm making a new one now. And this is what uh, you're gonna be working with. So at first it doesn't look too different uh, aside from the color scheme. Up here you have the normal debug, run, stop, clean up buttons and so on. Uh, your different targets actually up here and you have your resource tree on the right. Normally it would be on the left. However, you can already see a few differences in the, just like in the resource types, for example. Uh, backgrounds are gone. You have this new thing called tile sets. And these are all things I'm gonna be discussing in later videos. Again, so many different changes. Uh, a single video would span multiple hours. So uh, for now, we're just gonna focus on how you use the UI, uh, how you get started, really, using Game Maker Studio 2. So uh, if you're familiar with uh, Studio 1.4 and so on, you would know that you need objects and sprites and uh, you can either create them in the resource tree like before, uh, you'd notice maybe the buttons are gone from up here, or you can simply right click in this window here, the central one, which is the workspace, go to resource and select which kind of resource you want to create. Now, we're going to start off with an object because this is probably the resource you're going to be uh, most interested in and you'll immediately see one clear distinction uh, Game Maker Studio 2 has, which is this chaining system, this chaining workflow, uh, as uh, your, your games call it. So we have uh, our main window here and the events window on the right. And uh, you can also uh, open your parents and your physics objects. And uh, you may have noticed, yes, you can move around in the workspace. So this allows you to have lots and lots of objects open and move around and this chaining system allows you to not have every single aspect of your open of your of your object be open on your screen cluttering everything uh, so again this chaining system also applies to events so if i create a create event it creates this little code window here where all my creation code will go and again it is chained to the events uh, it actually takes it a step further if i were to create a new script down here uh, and we'll move the camera around. Uh, and if I were to rename it in the resource tree, I could rename it to a CR underscore test, for example. In here, I could do whatever I wanted, like a, a show debug message, for example. And in here, I could say hello world, for example. And I can move back up to my object here. And if I were to type a CR underscore test, 
uh, you can notice Auto Complete is still here. Uh, and I now middle click it, it would not, like it would previously open the window over everything. It now created with this little link saying that this code is actually being used in my creation code, which is nice just to be able to be more aware of the structure of your code. Uh, I personally think there is a slight problem with it and that is um, it doesn't show it's connected to other uh, objects as well. So you, uh, a script that is supposed to be called by multiple objects uh, is only linked to one object in this instance. However, it is still open down here as well and any changes you make in here, uh, such as of our i equals zero, will be reflected in this code editor up here. So uh, as you can see, you can move around in your um, in your workspace, allowing you to have a lot of windows open at the same time. However, you can also create multiple workspaces uh, by clicking the plus icon up here. And I strongly recommend you do that in order to sort uh, the different things you're working on. Maybe at some point you're working on a particular uh, graphics and shader system. And so you may want to have your graphics objects on with all your shaders. So you can have all of that in one package. And then another workspace where you have just your uh, just uh, the player object along with its sprites, perhaps. So uh, that's really the workspace system. Uh, and what's really nice with the workspace system is that it also allows you to uh, create separate windows for multiple screens. And you simply do that by uh, dragging this uh, tab down here and you now have a separate window, which is a proper Windows window. You can actually put on a second screen and so on, or just put in, minimize in the background uh, if that's how you like to organize your, uh, your workflow. So this is pretty much it for the workspace system. Uh, you can uh, create a bunch of different resources, many of which we already had. Some of them we didn't have in the same form, such as tile sets, which I'm also quite excited to show you in my in a later video. Uh, something else I want to mention, uh, you can move around your workspaces by pressing control tab and you get this nice, um, uh, this really nice shortcut system where you can just change between your different objects. And it's uh, just a nice way of getting around. Alternatively, you can also just use the resource tree over here uh, in order to get around more efficiently. So I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have uh, and you're excited about Game Maker Studio 2, uh, please give this video a like uh, to tell me you want more, uh, because I know I do. And, I'll, and subscribe also if you want to see my all my future videos on Game Maker Studio 2. I'll be sure to make a lot to cover all of the new features, including the room editor, which is awesome. Uh, the new changes to the code, tile sets, and I'll even make some tutorials about how to best use the new features that are available. I have a really good idea for a collision system with tile sets. So make sure you subscribe uh, to see this. And I'll see you guys next time for some more videos.